welcome to another video from explainingcomputers.com. This time we're going to be installing the ARM version of Windows 11 on a Raspberry Pi. Before we begin, I want to make it clear that Windows is not officially supported on a Pi, and indeed the only reason we can do this is because of an amazing community project called Windows on Raspberry that I've been following for some time. There's also been a debate surrounding the legality of installing Windows on a Raspberry Pi. However, an independent developer called BotSpot has created a Windows on Raspberry installer that downloads the required ARM64 files directly from Microsoft and places a legal, unlicensed evaluation version of Windows on a Pi, which is what we're going to be doing in this video. Right. In this video, we're going to be using this 4GB Raspberry Pi 4 in my favourite heatsink case. This is currently fitted with a microSD card running a 32-bit version of Raspberry Pi OS Bullseye. And here in Bullseye, we're going to be using the Windows on Raspberry Pi flasher from BotSpot to write Windows 11 to a microSD card. The card in question is this 32GB SanDisk Extreme Pro, which is the fastest card I've ever used on a Raspberry Pi. Note, however, that you can use a bootable USB storage device for Windows 11 if you prefer, and that whatever media you choose needs to be at least 32GB in size. So, let's put this card into this Lexar USB 3 reader and insert it into a USB 3 port on the Pi, like that. There we go. And if we go across to the desktop, get rid of uh, this like that and open up a terminal, we can get hold of the Windows on Raspberry Flasher scripts by entering git clone and then https colon forward slash forward slash github.com forward slash bot spot forward slash wor hyphen flasher like that. And if we press enter, there we are, it has completed. And now to run the Windows on Raspberry Flasher using a graphical interface, we need to enter first a tilde, like that, followed by a forward slash wor hyphen flasher, forward slash install hyphen wor hyphen gui dot sh. And if we now press enter, there we go, the script is executing. And fairly quickly, it gives us this requester, or we can pick our operating system. The default is Windows 11, but we could use Windows 10. I'm going to stick with Windows 11. And here, I'm on a Pi 4, so I'll stick with Pi 4 slash Pi 400, although there is an option here to create a media for a Pi 3 or a Pi 2. Anyway, I'm now going to click on Next, and we can now choose our language, which looks like English GB for me. ENGB will be fine, and Next. And then we have to choose our device. We're going to write this image to, which is going to be our micro SD card. There we are like that. And again, we'll click on next, which results in this installation overview. Everything looks fine here. So I'm just going to click on flash. And there we are. The process of creating our Windows 11 media for the Pi has fully started and it'll take some considerable time as it needs to download the required files from Microsoft compress them and create a Windows image. And so what I'm now going to do is to be patient, to leave things running and to go and have a cup of tea. And here I am back again. The process has finished, as we can see. I don't know quite how long it took, but I was away for 52 minutes, so it didn't take any longer than that although part of the speed of this process will depend on the speed of your internet connection. Anyway, as we can see, we're now ready to take the new media we've created to put it into the Pi and to reboot. And so to let that happen, let's now close down everything here so we can do just that. Greetings. I'm now going to remove the card we just created from the Pi like that and we'll switch it with the card we previously were booting from with Raspberry Pi OS on it. So I hope this go in there like that. There we are. And if we now turn on the power, 
and the Pi will boot. There we are, we've now got a nice Raspberry on the screen. And I understand this will stay here for quite some time. We need to do absolutely nothing other than being patient. And so what I think I'm going to do is to go and talk to a passing snail. And here I am back again just over half an hour later. That was a very interesting chat. And Windows on Raspberry seems to be getting on very well with its task. And here we are, towards the end of a standard Windows install process. So I'll just click yes to say I'm in the UK. And I'll now confirm my keyboard layout. And skip adding a second keyboard. And yes, we've arrived at a point we need to accept the license agreement. I will uh, do that. And here we are, we've got a few more set up questions. We'll set this up for uh, personal use and next. And now it wants me to add a Microsoft account. I don't particularly want to do that. Can we go to sign in options? And use an offline account, there we are. And we'll skip that again for now. We'll now set up our local account with of course a password. And in true Microsoft fashion, we have to answer some security questions. And now we've just got all the questions to which we answer no. Oh look, more Windows updates. Always a welcome interruption. I think I'll go and discuss them with another snail. And here I am back again. And whilst I was finding out the meaning of life, Windows 11 has finished installing here on the Raspberry Pi, which uh, is amazing. It's, this is a really interesting experience. We're running Windows on the Raspberry Pi and it works. This is, this is really cool. We can run up, for example, I don't know, the, uh, the settings and it'll, and it'll function. And talking of settings, I think I'll play around with a few of them. I think I'll make a few tweaks to make things read better on video. And I'll come back to you after that. So here I am back again, and I've made a few settings changes, although not as many as I made in my recent video on configuring Windows 11, because this copy of Windows 11 isn't activated, and that constrains customization. I've also paused updates for seven days so that the Windows update processes don't get in our way as I'm showing you around. Although, as you can see, with very little going on here on the Pi, all we're doing is running the resource monitor, we've still got relatively high CPU utilization. And this, I guess, is not surprising. The Pi wasn't designed to run an operating system as heavy as a Windows 11, but uh, it does work. And I am I'm impressed how well, in fact, Windows 11 does work on the Raspberry Pi. There are a few constraints linked to drivers. So for example, we don't have drivers for Wi-Fi. So I'm using here a wired ethernet connection. And we also don't have HDMI audio, although there is audio from the 3.5 millimeter audio jack. If I go down to the menu, it's uh, pretty responsive. That's not bad as I bring it up and down, is it? That's not too bad at all. It's fully populated now. All the icons have sorted themselves out from last time we were here. And let's go into settings because uh, I just want to look at about here and show you that we really are on a Raspberry Pi. I find this really exciting. Let's just uh, scroll down here and go down to about. And we can see that not only are we on a Raspberry Pi, but we've got our ARM Cortex A72 cores as the processor. We've got just under three gigabytes of RAM available. And it is, as you can see, this is surprising me. I do, I do find this a very, very interesting experience to be running Windows 11, the ARM version on a Raspberry Pi. Let's run up a browser. Let's show you the browsing experience with a Microsoft Edge. It'll take a second to run up. And uh, in part, this is because we're running from a fast micro SD card, although that wasn't too bad, was it? Although it's also, I'm sure, a processor issue. We could uh, look at a page on single board computers. That'll come up. This is perfectly usable, a little bit slow, but it's perfectly usable. I'm not going to try and show you YouTube playback, though. But we will go to this page I've bookmarked here which is the Windows on ARM documentation from Microsoft. 
And I want to bring this up just to remind us that we're running the ARM version of Windows on a Raspberry Pi, because a Raspberry Pi has got an ARM processor, so to natively run Windows on the Pi, we have to use an ARM version of Windows, not a version of Windows written for an x86 or x 664 processor, as we find in most laptops and desktops. And if we just click here on support for existing Windows apps on ARM, it reminds us that Windows on ARM runs native ARM apps, as well as many unmodified x86 and x86-64 apps. But of course, to run those x86 and x86-64 apps, Windows has to use emulation. And given that the Pi is already struggling a bit to run Windows 11, if you try to run x86 and x86-64 Windows apps here on the ARM version of Windows on the Pi, performance really isn't going to be that impressive. But uh, even so, it is impressive that this runs at all. This is a fascinating experiment running Windows 11 here on the Raspberry Pi, although most compatible Linux distros will offer better overall performance. The opportunity to straightforwardly install Windows on a Raspberry Pi clearly extends its capabilities. And I'd like to thank the Windows on Raspberry Project and BotSpot and all of the involved developers for making this a reality. Over the past few days, I've done some extensive testing. And whilst the system is sometimes sluggish, it's also very stable. And in fact, I've not had a single crash. Native ARM applications run with no problems. And I've also tried installing some x86-64 apps to run via emulation. For example, I installed Autodesk's Mesh Mixer, although sadly this would not run, regardless of what I tried in the ARM emulation settings, although it wouldn't have performed well anyway, as there were no GPU drivers for Windows on the Pi. However, I did manage to run Passmark Performance Test 10, which I never imagined would be possible on a Raspberry Pi, although the final results here are not fully representative of the Pi's capabilities, as this is x86-64 software running via emulation. But now that's it for another video. If you've enjoyed what you've seen here, please press that like button. If you haven't subscribed, please subscribe, and I hope to talk to you again very soon.